Joining me now here on the MMA Report, a man's going to step back inside the UFC octagon here at the end of the month, UFC 219. It is Lewis Smoker. Lewis, as always, man, I appreciate the time. Of course, uh, been since April, uh, since we have seen you. Uh, I was actually watching your interview with, with James Lynch, and uh, you were very forthcoming in, in that interview about kind of uh, the life outside of, of fighting. Was that something that... Uh, a story that you you plan on telling, or is it just kind of just came up in an interview and you know it's out there? No, oh, it's out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm a pretty open book. I don't really care. About, like, I don't really censor myself. I don't care about questions or anything. It, it just it sometimes I think it, you know you know I mean look I, I, as a media member we we love the honesty out there but. Uh, you know, as you have, uh, you know, made the change you have. I mean, how how has it affected training for you? Mm, not better now. Uh, I don't know. I just have more energy and stuff in the gym, kind of. Not as heavy a lot. Like, it's easier to lose weight. I get to eat more. So, yeah, that's cool. Uh, you know, and going back to, to that fight against Tim earlier this year, fight of the night, but it was, you know, the, the third loss in a row. Were you at all concerned that that might have been, uh, you know, the last fight in the UFC for you? Uh, no, they kind of gave me a pass on the board one with all the situations of how it went down. So I was like, so then I kind of knew I wasn't getting cut off the Tim loss. As you have obviously evolved since that fight, you know, is there something in that fight that, that bugs you with, with how it went down? Or are you like, you know, look, hey, you know what? Tim was just a better guy. Oh, uh, yeah, he was better than me that night. Um, he, he beat me. Um, I was a little tired. Uh, weight cut took a lot out of me. I couldn't really finish. I felt like I would have liked to finish like a couple of the guillotines that I had, like, felt like i had him pretty deep i just didn't really have the energy to squeeze so yeah that kind of sucked um but yeah i mean it's what it is i've talked to a lot of guys and i know with you out being in hawaii it's obviously not close to las vegas but they've talked about taking advantage of the ufc performance institute and uh you know more of just talking to you know the personnel there and, and educating themselves on various aspects of uh, of the fight game, whether it's, you know, the attrition side of it, whatnot. Ha have you uh, tried to take advantage of that? Well, uh, I, I popped in there every now and then. Like, I hop in there every, like, so on and whatever. But, you know, um, it's a long way from home to go out there just to train for a couple of days or whatever it might be. So, you know, it's, like, not really something I, I can kind of do, you know. I mean, and I don't really like being away from my daughter for very long. So, you know, I mean, if I'm ever out there with like the family or something like I've tried, I've made time, I made time to go like right when it first opened, like, and check out the facilities and stuff. Like I went over there and I checked out some stuff and, you know, yeah, um, I've been over there a few times, you know, got some work in, but yeah, you know, it's, it's whatever. Like, it seems to be kind of for more like the local guys that are out there and, you know, like. Guys that they'll see on an everyday basis are the ones that they kind of like cater to, you know. Has uh, the entire uh, training camp for this one been at home? Oh uh, yeah. In taking it's on, been... taking on Matthias here, he we haven't seen him, you know, since twenty sixteen that win against John Moraga. Uh, you know, obviously it's been been a while for him. So how how do you prepare for a guy that, uh, you know, you you ha you can't watch film on him, you know, for the last year. Uh, I'm just going to try to, you know, take it how it goes. Um, just assuming he's going to kind of be a Thai Jitsu type fighter, uh, Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu. That's what I call him, Thai Jitsu. I'm coining that phrase, trademark, Willis Smoker. You guys owe me a dollar every time you say it. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, no, um, I mean, that's his base, you know what I mean? You're going to assume the guy kind of has, like, He's probably going to have some new tricks up his sleeve because he's a young, evolving fighter. You know, they're constantly growing, constantly, like, learning new things and, like, trying to incorporate into their games. So I'm assuming he's going to have at least a few new tricks. And um, I'm just going to try to, like, kind of, you know, base my ideas off of whatever his base is and then just go from there. Is it just simply just read and react? I mean, is that about the best way to kind of describe how this fight, you, you know, this fight's going to go down for yourself? Yeah, pretty much. Just kind of just see who's better, I guess. Believe in myself. Hopefully I get the W. Believing in yourself, is that ever been something that you've doubted? 
yeah, like when, like early in my career, I didn't really like, or like you know, you're just kind of scared, like. Like, what if this guy has, like, this secret technique that, like, beats everybody as, like, the dim mock or something, you know, you don't know about, like, and you're just not ready for, like, as you get older, you kind of realize it's not really a thing, you know? But, like, I mean, like, well, like, what if you come across the John Jones, you know what I mean, of your era that's just, like, throwing this shit that no one's ever seen before, like, hitting lateral drops and spinning elbows and no one's done it to that point, so you're just like, what the fuck was that, you know? Or, like, what if you come across the Anderson and this guy just matrixes you and you're just like, what the fuck? You know, like, I couldn't do anything and you were just never there for me to hit. I couldn't find my rhythm, you know? So that's always, like, you know, see, so you're, like, everyone has it in the back of their mind that you might come across this guy, that guy this fight, you know? So, but, like, I feel like if you just trust yourself, you know, you just got to do the best you can, you know what I mean? If you come across that guy, just try to trust your training, trust your coaches and try to, you know, just, just adapt as best as possible. Has there been a fighter that you've watched recently that, you know, he's thrown some technique out there that you're like, holy crap, what is that? That seems to happen more and more often as MMA is evolving. Everybody seems to be evolving at such a rapid rate with, like, the freedom of information that there is right now, kind of, you know? Like, everyone seems to be, like, going to different places, training new techniques, chaining together them together in their own ways, and it's like... It really seems to be like put like everyone's just throwing things that no one's ever seen before. It seems to happen like every card. You're just like, what the fuck was that? Like, um, fuck. What's the most recent example I can come up with? Uh, shit. I guess Demetrius's armbar is probably the most recent example of like the suplex to the armbar catch. Mm-hmm. Like, um, like that's probably the most recent example of like things where you're just like, what the fuck? Like, when when did when was this become a thing? Like. I mean, I've heard of it before. I've seen it. I've drilled it a couple of times. I've seen it done a few times, but, like, I've never seen it done, like, on that stage, you know what I mean? So, in MMA. So, it was just, like, you know, done at the highest levels. How many guys in your gym tried to pull that move off after he did it? We all tried it. <laughs> immediately, everybody, immediately. it was like the Anderson Silva front kick. Immediately, everyone tries it. I think, and that's, and I've talked to a bunch of fighters about that move, and they say once you try it, then you start to kind of realize how great Demetrius is, um, you know. And obviously, he he's a guy that that you're chasing in your division. I mean, obviously, you know, you're, you're trying to get the win here. I mean, but where where do you think your place is right now in this division? I have no idea. I don't really care. I mean. I, I don't know. I just, I don't care. I'm just trying to get this win and then we'll see where I end up. Um, I honestly, like a couple of interviews ago, I thought I could, I was like, yeah, I can take Demetrius, but I don't know. Having a bad day today. So that's not how I feel today. <laughs> Today's a low day. When you have those bad days in the gym, how do you not let it bring you down? It wasn't even in the gym. It was because of my blood work and because I was trying to go eat sushi and every sushi place I went to is like closed right now or like, <laughs> It wasn't working out. So I'm kind of pissed right now. I couldn't get my sushi. And then, like, yeah, I was trying to do my blood work earlier today. And so, like, I went all the way out to Milani because they're like, well, you'll just be able to walk in and do it. So I go in and try to do it. They're like, no, you can't just walk in. You, you need the order from the doctor. I'm like, oh, they said they faxed it. Oh, well, you know, we don't have it. Could you tell them to fax it again? It's like, oh, they already left the office. So I was like, well, I just drove out here for, like, 20 minutes for nothing, you know? Like, great. Is there a so go-to sushi rule for you? So sushi roll for you? Uh, I, I'll pretty much eat any sushi. Um, my boy Russell Doan, he got me kind of hooked on Thai. Okay. It's like snapper. It's like I think it's red snapper. It might be, or it's it's a type of snapper. But yeah, that thing is delicious. There's like you put ponzu sauce on it. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, I'm a big sushi fan. I, 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 since I get to travel around the country, Atlanta is actually one of the best sushi I've had. Really? You and you would never think Atlanta. Really? But we have found this, this place and just had good sushi when I was in Atlanta a couple weeks ago. We had some good sushi there, but yeah, I'm always down for good sushi. Dude, surprisingly enough, we went to this place in Brasilia, Brazil when when Russell fought Yuri. It was like right like there was like a mall right across the street from the hotel and like so like they had like pretty healthy food. It was kind of an odd fusion. It was like they had like an Italian like spaghetti bar and like like romaine lettuce and arugula and like spaghetti, garlic bread and like olive oil and vinaigrette. 
and like the next thing on the bar is like sushi and then it was just like all sushi after that like so that and like 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 asian stuff and uh, so that was kind of an interesting fusion but they had the legit best sashimi i've ever had that thing melted in my mouth like mm. butter and brazilia brazil is inland it's like in the mountains so i was like how where are you guys getting this from like but it's it was so fresh it was like it was literally like like fresh off the boat, like had like the ice chips or whatever on it. Like it wasn't frozen, but it had like ice chips kind of on it. And like when you put it in your mouth, it just melted. I was like, what the? Wow. I, I, we never yeah, think Brazil and sushi. We'd never think that. That's definitely. Well, I mean, I could see this like right on the beach, like Sao Paulo or whatever. I'm like, yeah, you guys are catching this right offshore. Obviously, you have fish, but like, you know what I mean? Like Georgia or like Atlanta too. Atlanta's a little bit inland, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of one of those things where you're like, how, like, what, where, what? I guess, I don't know. <laughs> you, you never, you never quite know. Um, you know, yeah, you know but, uh, that, gems yeah, you know, and obviously you mentioned about the blood work and how that didn't work out for you. And, and thinking about being over in Hawaii, and, and we hear UFC fighters talk about the wake up calls they get from USADA at six o'clock in the morning. Has that ever happened to you? Oh, uh, I haven't got a six o'clock one yet, but like every time somehow they come over, I'm hung over as shit. Like, I'm fucking hurting. Like, a couple of times, they, like, knocked on the door, and, like, I was passed out on my floor. So, I'm, like, I get up. They're, like, knocking. Like, they're the police. I'm, like, who is this? Or, like, the first time, I was, like, who is this? Afterwards, I know they're knock already. It's, like, oh, yeah, it's these fuckers. <laughs> but, um, like, I feel bad because, like, every, somehow, every time they catch me, I'm, like, super hungover. So, I have, like, the hardest time peeing because I'm dehydrated. Uh-huh. So, like, I don't know, like, they just end up waiting for, like, two hours for me to piss. And I'm so here chugging, like, eight, like, eight gallons of water or, like, eight glasses of water. I'm, like, trying to eat, trying to, like, drink coffee or, like, any caffeine I can get. Like, my G Fuel, like, I'll drink my G Fuel and stuff, trying to, like, there's caffeine in it. So, I'll try to pee. One time, I even, like, the guy, I, I took the guy because Longs is, like, right there. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah. Longs is, like, like, literally, like, ten steps away. So like I like I went with he went with me to go buy a beer and I ended up drinking like four beers like while he just sat there and watched me so I could piss. Here's here's the thing I don't get. Where do you sign up to to have that job to go drug test fighters? Like what makes you go that's what I want to do? I don't know. I wonder like I wonder if people just fall into it. It seems like a thing you kind of fall into. Oh yeah, that that is a guy. Yeah, like I actually had to watch me poop too, because I was trying to pee and I don't. Know, I ended up having a shit before I had to piss. It was weird. Like nothing came out. Like, it was odd. Oh man, that that guy is probably he's probably like going back to the office, going, guys, do you realize what I just went through? Check this with him. If you ever find Emilio that works for you, Sada, you can fact check it. I'm not lying. <laughs> but uh, it, it just, I, I just like, I can't imagine some of the reactions they've gotten when they've knocked on someone's door at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, because like, you know I think you're gonna piss off more people than not. I mean, like I'm a, I, mean, I I get up early in the morning, so I'd be up at that time. But I gotta imagine there's a lot of guys who aren't getting up at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, no, like I think Tim Kennedy like put a gun to somebody one uh, time. No, it was Jake Ellenberger because oh, I guess Ellen? like they were bashing on his his, his uh, door and he had no clue it yeah. was, and he opened the door with a gun in his hand. Oh yeah. No, like, I mean, I don't even blame him, dude. You know what I mean? Like, because, like, dude, they knock like they're the police. Like, you kind of wake, you kind of look at your door and you're like, what the fuck is this? Like, like, like I, I thought, like, the first time I was doing it, I was actually playing the UFC 2 game, like, right when it came out. And, like, it was kind of like, me and my friends were, like, playing, we're, like, screaming at the TV and stuff. So I thought it was my neighbors mad at me. So I was like, oh, shit, be quiet. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. But uh, you've got the fight here, December thirtieth in Las Vegas uh, at UFC two nineteen. Lewis, as always, I appreciate time. Good luck in the fight, and of course, let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media. Uh, you can find me at Last Samurai UFC on Twitter, IG, Snapchat, La- uh, Lewis Smoke on Facebook. Um, yeah, Last Samurai MMA. Um, Xbox and I'm Dixon Yamada on Steam or on Counter Strike. 